Alright, what's going on everyone and welcome to the series where we discuss ridiculously broken degenerate decks in Magic's history that were so powerful they needed to be banned. Today we're talking about Pioneer Oops All Spells, a really janky combo deck that existed in Magic for ages and still exists in Modern and Legacy, but it upended Pioneer shortly after its introduction. So if you're not familiar with Oops All Spells, the idea is to play no lands and mill your entire deck in a single turn. If you're familiar with decks like Char Belcher or Zombie Hunt, it's sort of in the realm of these types of decks. In the case of Pioneer, the plan was to mill your entire deck with Undercity Informer and Balistrad Spy. Both of these will mill target player, and you're going to target yourself, until they hit a land. The Informer costs 3 plus 1 to sacrifice itself or another creature, and the spy does it for 4, and in the case of this deck, it didn't have lands. Zero lands. Now you might be wondering, how do you pay for these without lands? You actually play these lands. <laughs> this is very confusing. What, what do you mean these? I thought there were no lands, but these lands have a unique aspect to them, and that's that they are the backside of Zendikar Rising modal double-faced cards. So on the front side, they look like this. And this is the side that matters when you're milling. This card, for example, you could play it as a land, but when you're milling, it's a spell. So what this allows you to do is play all of these cards as the lands, but then when you mill, you mill your entire deck because you don't technically have lands when you're milling. It doesn't matter what they do on the front side, most of them are obsolete, they're just lands. So why does the deck want to mill its entire library? Well first off, there's Creeping Chill. It deals 3 damage to the opponent and you gain 3 life. However, if it's put into your graveyard from your library, so if you mill it, you can exile it to get the effect for free. So what this means is, when you mill your entire library, these are going to deal up to 12 damage and gain 12 life on turn 4. And this enables Silver Smote Ghoul, which is a 3-1 that at end of turn, if you gained 3 or more life, you can return it from the graveyard straight to the battlefield. So that's another 12 damage on the following turn after we mill the library. And the Ghoul then triggers Prized Amalgam. This is a 3-3 that basically it says whenever another creature gets reanimated, whenever something enters the battlefield from the graveyard, it's going to see that and return itself at the beginning of the next end step. So ideally on turn 4, you play an Informer or a Spy, you mill your entire library into your graveyard, deal 12, gain 12, reanimate 4 3 ones, at end of turn, which are then going to reanimate for 3 threes at the end of your opponent's turn, so then you can untap and attack for 24. But if you mill your entire library, how do you have another turn? How do you have a combat? If you have no library, you're gonna die at the beginning of the next draw step, so how, how does that work? And that's where World Spine Worm comes in. None of the effects matter, the casting cost, the size, nothing matters. What matters is, when it gets put into your graveyard, it shuffles itself back into your library. So what this means is you mill your entire library, then you pick out the World Spine Worms, usually two of them, and that's your library now, meaning you have two turns to win by attacking with your zombie army. The deck also had a backup win condition with Thassa's Oracle, a staple in many banned decks that never gets banned itself. It costs two blue, and when you play it, if your library size is less than or equal to your devotion to blue, you win the game. So it adds two devotion and your deck size is going to be two because you have two world spine worms. So this is an instant win combo and the deck would pair this with claim to fame to reanimate the oracle. It can reanimate small creatures so you mill the oracle into the graveyard and then you play claim to reanimate it and win the game. The deck also had Haunted Dead, so from the graveyard, it can discard two cards to return to the battlefield. So this had a lot of uses. First off, if you had Oracle in hand without two blue, you could discard it then reanimate it potentially. It could also discard any zombies you drew. Every zombie you draw doesn't get reanimated, but with the 
haunted dead you could discard reanimate the haunted dead then reanimate the zombies and also it could discard world spine worm after milling your entire library you had two turns to win but with haunted dead when you drew the world spine worms you could use it from the graveyard to discard them and then put them back into your library which is definitely relevant i also want to mention some of the lands the deck played some of them were actually worth casting tangle floor hedron for example could let you combo off a turn early balaged recovery could get back an informer or a spy if it got thought seized for example jewelry disruption could be a counter spell if you needed it there's also some reanimation some of these are relevant the front sides of these on occasion you would play them another really interesting aspect of this deck is it usually played more than 60 cards this is borderline blasphemous in magic Every card past your 60th just waters down the core of your deck. You're less likely to draw your best cards if you put a 61st card in, right? It just doesn't make sense to play more than 60 unless you're playing something like Yorian, for example. But Oops All Spells didn't play Yorian, still typically played 65 to 80 cards. The reason being, you really didn't want to draw your mill payoffs. You didn't want to draw Creeping Chill. You didn't want to draw your zombies. So ironically, being inconsistent was better. So it was pretty common for the deck to play like 65 or so cards, but some pushed it up to 80 by playing extra tutors like Neoform and Eldritch Evolution to find combo creatures. So it's kind of shocking that a deck like this was competitive. This seems like a meme deck and it kind of still is. It's, it is a meme deck in Modern, for example, but it just felt unstoppable if you could reach turn four. This was winning competitive tournaments and consistently. So on February 15th in 2021, both the Undercity Informer and the Balustrade Spy were banned in an absolutely huge wave of bans. It was a, it was a pretty big ban announcement. But the reason cited by Wizards of the Coast is the deck had a very high win rate and was difficult to interact with. Wizards of the Coast also committed a cardinal sin among the professional player community as they said Pioneer couldn't be at its most fun with this deck being popular. And that's a, that's a very naughty word. The F word that being fun is not well received among pro players they don't like cards being banned on the basis of it not being fun but they actually said that in the announcement and i think that cements oops all spells as one of the weirdest decks to ever be banned the deck feels like it should have been just some cheesy casual combo deck like zombie hunt but it actually happened to be incredibly powerful it broke the fundamental 60 card rule. You never go past 60 without a reason, but it did it. And then Watsi openly admitted that the deck just wasn't fun. What a weird deck. And that's the story of Oops All Spells, a deck that is technically still legal in formats like Modern and Legacy, so you can still try this thing. Although those formats are much more equipped to interact with it. But in Pioneer, however, it ran rampant for a while, and so it had to be banned. It's an interesting one. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, I have a playlist dedicated to these banned decks, and you can find a link to it in the description below. Check that out if you're interested. And in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting, and I will see you in the next one.